In this video, I will discuss static corrections, why they are required, how they are computed from the near surface elevation and weathered layer model, and finally their application to the seismic data. We start with the basic definitions. So statics are corrections applied to seismic reflection data to remove the effect of weathered layer and elevation. These corrections are applied by reducing the data with respect to a datum plane. Weathered layer is a near surface low velocity layer composed of unconsolidated material. So this is a reflected ray path from source to receiver. In order to understand the importance of static corrections, we reduce the data to zero offset and assume that waves travel vertically inside the earth and are bounced back. Now let's consider a subsurface model with a horizontal reflector and a low velocity weathered layer with thickness increasing on both sides. If we consider this point, the weathered layer is thicker and therefore it will offer more delay to the reflected events from the interface. Whereas in the center the weathered layer is thin and therefore we will get less delay in the events. And finally on the right side it is again thicker and therefore will offer more delay to the events. Now these would be the seismograms for these reflecting events. And if we fill the in-between portion, we will get a seismic section. As we can see, our reflector is flat, but in the seismic section, we are getting an anticline structure, which is due to the weathered layer. Thus, we are not getting the true subsurface geometry of the reflector in the seismic image. We need to compute weather layered statics to remove this effect. Now let's forget the weathered layer and consider the topography or variation in the elevation. Here we can see at this point we will have a larger ray path and reflected events will take more time to reach the surface. Similarly here we have a shorter path and reflected events will take less time. Here again the events will take more time. So these will be our reflected seismograms and if we fill in between we get an inverted image of topography in the seismic section. Thus it is evident that we need to compute elevation statics to remove the effect of topography. We now compute the static corrections by reducing the data with respect to a datum plane. Let's consider a cross section model with elevation variations. We have a weathered layer with velocity v0 and a sub-weathered layer with velocity v1. Let's take a datum plane below the sub-weathered layer which will be the zero line. All seismic data would be reduced with respect to this datum. Now if h0 is the thickness and v0 is the velocity of weathered layer, it will offer a time delay of h0 by v0. Similarly, the sub-weathered layer will offer a time delay of H1 by V1. We also need to handle the elevation variations. Seismic data has units of time, while elevation has units of space. So we need to convert elevation variations in time by using a replacement velocity. This is an arbitrary velocity and is generally taken a little above the sub-weathered layer velocity. Now the static correction is given by this equation. Here we have the delay time of weathered layer, sub weathered layer and so on as well as elevation difference from datum divided by replacement velocity. The multiplication with thousand is for converting seconds to milliseconds. We can also simplify the equation in this form where the delay times have a sigma term. So in this case this is the weathered layer statics and this is the elevation static. Now the selection of the datum plane is arbitrary. If it is selected below the elevation and weathered layer, then since elevation is at a higher altitude than the datum, therefore statics will have a minus value, which means the travel times from the land mass above the datum plane is to be removed. On the other hand, if datum plane is above the elevation, then elevation is less than datum and statics will be positive. This implies that additional times need to be added to each trace according to the elevations. In this way, each trace will finally have the same start time. 
If seismic surveys have been previously carried out in the same area, then the datum plane and replacement velocity of these surveys should be used in order to avoid missed tie issues between seismic data of different vintages. We consider a ray path for source to receiver. Seismic is a two-way time, therefore we need static corrections at the source position for the downgoing wave and at the receiver position for the upgoing wave. Thus the statics for the source point is called source statics and that for the receiver point is called receiver statics. These source statics are usually valid for the vibro size since they are positioned at the surface of the earth. But in case of a dynamite, a hole is drilled preferably deeper than the weathered layer and the dynamite is fired from the bottom of the hole. In this case, the source statics is simply computed by the difference of elevation and datum subtracted by the hole depth and divided by the replacement velocity. Now we will see how the statics are applied to the seismic data. The computed statics are stored in the trace headers and these time shifts are applied to the traces whenever required. In this case, we have a bunch of traces and the statics are displayed at the top. Accordingly, the first trace has positive statics, thus a time shift is added. On the second trace, we have zero statics, thus no shift is applied. Similarly, a positive time shift is applied to the third trace. On the fourth trace, the statics is negative, thus the trace is pulled up. Similarly, statics are applied to all the traces. We can now clearly see a dipping reflector. It may be noted that for positive statics, zeros are padded at the start and extra samples are clipped from the end to maintain the same trace length. Similarly, for the negative time shifts, zeros are padded at the end and extra samples are clipped from the start. To understand the effect of statics, we have generated a computer model of a geological cross-section. Now, without the application of statics, the seismic image will not provide the precise geometry of the reflector as shown by the red line. But after the application of statics, we will get a clear, interpretable image of the reflector. Now, this is a real seismic section without statics. We can see discontinuity and distortions in the middle portion of the reflectors. But after application of statics, we get a much better subsurface image. In this way, we have seen that statics are an important aspect of seismic imaging and must be applied to seismic data to get continuity of the reflectors.